this is a beautiful uh, mid-May morning here on the Corsica River. I'm Frank DiGiolionardo. I'm with the Corsica River Conservancy, an uh, all-volunteer organization that's been devoted to restoring the uh, Corsica River now for since 2005. It's been quite a while. One of the things that we've been doing for the last six years is working with the Department of Natural Resources uh, to bring uh, oysters into the river uh, to restore some of our historic oyster bars here. And the key person in that program is to my left, uh, Chris Judy, uh, with the Department of Natural Resources. And, uh, Chris was kind enough to come out this morning and give us a little hand. Uh, like I said, this is an all-volunteer effort. We've got uh, about 44 uh, residents in this area that have piers on the river that have uh, agreed to uh, have uh, oysters growing at their piers, and we're going to show you how we do that. Uh, basically, we've got uh, cages that have been um, provided by DNR uh, using, uh, I think, prison industry uh, folks to construct them, and we hang them off of the piers. Uh, we keep them raised up off of the bottom uh, where they can grow better. They're not as uh, uh, liable to catch disease or uh, die off if they're raised off the bottom and away from the silt. And I don't know if you can see uh, these oysters. They, they have a lot of mud on them, but uh, they come to us in the, uh, in the fall from the, uh, the state's hatchery at Horn Point in Cambridge, Maryland. Uh, at that point, the spat are just little dots for the most part, and they grow here over the river, over, over the winter, um, and then in the spring, we go around and collect them to deposit them out on the bar. Now, I'll let Chris talk a little bit about uh, what you're seeing here. He is the expert. You may want to get a little close up. Uh, this is a shell with some spat. One, two, that one's dead. They don't all live. Three, four, five, six. So we have six live and about three dead. We have spat on some other shells. Uh, some of the spat are covered by some of this growth. These are bryozoans, mud tube worms. So what looks like brown mud or, or gook uh, slime. Now here's actually some eggs of a goby fish. They're covered in some of the uh, growth. So we have some creatures growing on the shells. Spat, of course, growing on the shells. This is a miniature reef occurring at the pier. These oysters, after they've grown at the person's pier, are taken into the river, planted on a sanctuary, and they continue to grow. Now we can show you the product that you have after three, four, five years. After the spat grow a number of years, these are perhaps five or six years old, they become large clumps of oysters. Again, maybe a shell started with six or five spat, turns into a clump of two or three large oysters. Uh, here's some oysters here and these two with mussels. Mussels grow on the oysters after they've lived on the reef a while. The oysters and the mussels filter. Uh, some other creatures, barnacles, they filter the water. So again, the reef that started at the pier has continued on the oyster bar in the course cut. So this is a natural oyster from the reef. It's a single oyster, a nice shape, just an individual oyster like you'd see at a restaurant. So at the reef there are some of these natural oysters, but there are thousands and thousands of these oysters that were grown at people's piers. So uh, nature's producing oysters for the reef at a low level, uh, however, and the people here in the river are producing oysters for the reef at a higher level. That's pretty much what we have through the Marylanders Grow Oysters program. A lot of cooperative effort and teamwork. Yeah, and this is going on uh, throughout the state. Uh, I, Chris, I forget how many uh, organizations you've got growing. Well, we have uh, 30 different tributaries growing oysters at the pier. And uh, we did some rough calculation about how many oysters we've been able to get out just in the course of the river here over the last six years. And we're probably somewhere around a quarter of a million to half a million oysters which makes a considerable impact, we think, because you know each oyster, uh, mature oyster, can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. That's purifying 50 gallons of water a day. And when you think about a river like this, where we've had a lot of success in restoration, but we still struggle with water clarity and trying to keep the algae down, uh, oysters are just as effective a tool as you could think of uh, in getting that job done. So. Uh, Hope you, you got something out of this little session this morning. Uh, we're going to 
do our collection uh, and then head down river to the uh, oyster bar and do our planting. Uh, hopefully, if you live on the river, uh, join us in this, uh, this kind of endeavor. Uh, if you don't live on the river, support Corsica River Conservancy. Uh, you can find out more information at CorsicaRiverConservancy.org on the uh, internet.